G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy, continuing our series of doing individual videos for draft prospects ahead of the 2024 draft on November 20th. Today we are doing Jagger Smith. If you'd like to see any other players I've done in this playlist, I should have about 15 names in there right now. Click in the top right corner and you can see all of those videos. So I'm going to talk about Jagger Smith, one of the top prospects from this year's draft, a smaller bodied, light framed inside midfielder that might be certainly the most prolific midfielder available this year and probably the best performed as well. He can be a little bit divisive and I'd imagine there are some clubs at the pointy end of this year's draft who Jagger would suit and other clubs where I think maybe that's not the most suitable selection for him. So we'll get into why. We'll talk about who he is as a player, his strengths, his weaknesses, and ultimately where he might go in this year's draft, because I think that is an interesting conversation too. But as far as draft range goes, it's not that high because we're talking about one of the best midfielders in this year's draft and still an outside contender to go at pick one. As I currently record this on the 10th of November, it's certainly not locked in who Richmond's going to take as pick one. And as we'll get to, there is a bit of a belief that he is one of about three players that Richmond could conceivably pick at this point. So like I said, smaller bodied inside mid, but man, nobody finds the ball like Jagger Smith. His stoppage craft is probably unparalleled in this year's draft and he's shown an ability to move up to different levels, particularly the VFL. I think in his first game of VFL, he had a game high 31% possessions. So as far as performance goes, stepping up to the level, consistency, volume, stoppage craft, this guy's got it all. In fact, he played three games for Richmond's VFL side and his average was 27 possessions a game. So that's really impressive for a smaller bodied midfielder where you think, okay, maybe Jagger stepping up to playing against seasoned men might get, you know, worked out of the contest fairly easily. No, it's very hard to stop him getting his hands on the footy. So if you're a fantasy football fan, you might want to get this kid in your fantasy team by round one of next year because there was a game for Oakley in the Coach Talent League. He had a 50 possession game. You just rarely see that in the modern game. Well, actually in the modern game, possession counts are higher than ever. That being said, 50 is still absolutely out of this world. Had a bit of a quiet game the next week, just got the, you know, 40 possessions. But generally speaking, like the gap between his best and worst performances is not that high. So you're just getting a consistent week in, week out performer for your team in the midfield. Really good work ethic. I don't think you can be a player like Jagger Smith and not have a really good work ethic. He's clearly got a great endurance base. He's a decent athlete. He's not particularly explosive, but his running capacity, it's self-evident because you just can't win that much of the footy without being incredibly fit for a start. There's also good inside-outside balance with Jagger. So even though he's quite small, in that 50 possession game, 24 of those possessions were won when the ball was in dispute. They, they were contested possessions. So his ability to win his own ball and also float around stoppages and be that release player is quite strong. And we'll get into the knocks on him because that is where ultimately, you know, some clubs might really like the look of Jagger for their club and others might not. But to cover off his year, you know, in the championships, he was runner-up in the Lark medal behind Harvey Langford, Leonardo Lombard. He had 29.2 possessions Half of those contested at 13.8 and 6.8 clearances. For the record, he was ranked number one for all three of those stats in those games. He doesn't really make a lot of mistakes, particularly by hand. He hits his target so routinely. So he's considered, broadly speaking, probably the safest pick in this year's draft. So to cover off those strengths before we get into some downsides with Jagger, his ability to accumulate the footy is not only elite at junior level, but I'd imagine before too long, he will become an elite accumulator at AFL level two. Those clean hands, consistency of performance. I think his lowest possession count this year was 24. That evasiveness, you know, he's so crafty and, and nippy that it almost doesn't really matter that he's lightly framed because he doesn't really get caught that much. And in a contested situation, he is good. First of all, he's hard to catch, but he does win his own footy, which was probably one one of the biggest concerns you might have when you look at his height and weight ratio. So he has a lot of attributes that make a great midfielder. You know, he reads the ball really well. He sharks the taps outstandingly well. He's also very one touch, which is very handy. Good decision making, balance from inside to out, gets the ball from an inside situation to an outside situation extremely well. However, with that all being said, obviously that's a very glowing endorsement. So what, what is the knock on Jagger? Well, he doesn't do a lot wrong, but he probably isn't as impactful as other prospects in this year's draft and would be a relatively low meters gained, at least per possession than any other player. Maybe his total meters gained tally would be quite high because he just finds so much of it but he's not really the sort of prospect who's taking the game on with really risky ball movement or driving the ball with an absolute dart on a 55 meter kick to a leading forward so his highlights might be a little bit modest compared to say some of the other top high potential prospects like a Sam Lawler he didn't hit the scoreboard a lot but in the last five games of the Coates Talent League he did hit the scoreboard four times so he's shown progress in that area but ultimately because of the lack of damaging 
being ball use. That is probably the biggest reason he's not considered an absolute Monty to go pick one. He probably doesn't have a great deal of versatility, you know, compared to someone like a Murphy Reed who has proven himself as a smaller midfielder to go forward and kick goals. But I'd imagine Jagger will be an accomplished enough midfielder where he probably won't need a second position at the next level, in my opinion. So we'll discuss his draft range, uh, which, like I said, is kind of narrow. But in my opinion, there will be teams that I think he's suited to and other teams that are not all picking at the pointy end of this year's draft. So Cal Toomey ranked him as the fifth best prospect in this year's draft. The age in their mock draft had him going at pick six. And according to Fox Footy, he's still right in the pick one frame. I'd imagine if Richmond just hold pick one, they're still deciding maybe between Lawler, Finn O'Sullivan, and Jagger. So Jagger is the third of those three. But it is entirely possible that if Richmond, you know, don't trade for pick two and take Jagger there or whatever their intentions are, it is still possible he's there at pick six. And that is because there's some teams where I don't know if he's entirely suited to them. ESPN, for the record, also has him going at pick eight to St. Kilda. So you'd imagine that's probably about as late as someone like Jagger goes. So who do I think is suited to him and who do I think is not? Well, I think it makes a difference where a team is in terms of their list position and how fleshed out their young midfield is. So for instance, I think it would make sense for Richmond to get a safe bet player, not a pick one in my opinion, but I think he suits them well because he can be complemented by more damaging, offensively minded types than someone like a Jagger. I could probably apply the same logic to Melbourne. Like I said, I've done a whole video about Melbourne's intentions in this year's draft and for them, they're, they're building out a midfield for the post Petrarca and Oliver and Jack Viney era. I mean, he can come in at AFL level impact straight away, so maybe he suits them in both senses of the word, but I think Melbourne is still early enough in what they're trying to do with their young group coming through that will likely potentially contend when Tasmania is around. So I think that applies to them. Whereas someone like a Carlton or an Adelaide, I think it's a, there's a case to be made, but they'll be looking for a midfielder with a bit more point of difference, someone with a bit more offensive punch. Someone like an Adelaide, for instance, might not look for a smaller bodied, low impact per possession sort of player. They're probably looking for a taller, offensively minded player, maybe like a Harvey Langford. That's just my opinion. I don't know what their intentions are. So I'd imagine that Carlton or an Adelaide would probably both prefer Finn O'Sullivan or Sid Draper if either of those players are available. And further to that, maybe an Adelaide would prefer a Harvey Langford, but potentially St Kilda makes sense. If he gets past St Kilda's first or second selection, they're both you know one after the other. That would be a pretty big surprise at this rate. I'll be surprised if he gets that far. In my last mock draft, I had Jagger Smith being selected by Melbourne at pick six. So I think it's a fairly tight range, but there will be some differing opinions on Jagger Smith as a prospect. But over to you. Let me know in the comments, what do you think of Jagger? Would you be happy with your club drafting him at your first selection? But for now, I'll thank you for watching. I'll thank you for being subscribed and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.